Welcome to Friday. Um, today we have Michael Solvay, and he is from Montreal, Canada. Um, you saw his palette yesterday, very, very colorful palette. He'll show you one of his uh, massive paintings behind him, which is really beautiful. Michael um, has asked that you can just ask him any questions you want during his presentation. Um, Michael is a brand ambassador. He's a, just a fabulous artist, um, very knowledgeable about how to set up studios as well as being a fabulous artist. Thank you. So please, if you're on, on uh, Zoom, you'll be able to ask questions live. If you're on Facebook, um, Angela, Giovanni, Gabriel, Johnny, Ethel will all help um, after, um, ask your questions to Michael. With that, Michael, thank you so very much for joining us today. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. You know, uh, tomorrow I have my birthday, so that's the best gift what I can imagine. Thank you for that. Oh, excellent. So we're going to see a presentation, a, a slides from, from Michael. Um, he's going to be setting up his paper. His paper takes about mm -hmm. 10 minutes to set up. He'll explain what that means and how he does that. But first, we're going to go ahead and see his, um, his slides. OK, so uh, first of all, I want to show you our subject for today. That's this one beautiful lady here. Mm -hmm. And you know, my teacher always told me, if you want to have a demo, you have to choose like a subject uh, the man with a bear and uh, glasses or sunglasses, because it's more easy to hide your subject. It's like a <laughs> fix for the artist. And he say, never paint the kids because you couldn't hide. You have to do that job perfectly. So today we will make that experiment. But the problem is uh, I have to prepare my paper in advance. And I know it's always people ask me uh, how I'm preparing my paper. So today I want to share that. You will see all the steps and the process. And in that case, you will know why I have a time to mix my pigments on the paper perfectly. And there is no rush for that. So first of all, I, I switch the camera and you will see. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm preparing the sketch. Uh, and you know, the problem is uh, it's it's very soft lady and uh, there is no strong shadows here. There is no strong contrast, but I have a lot of lines. First of all, I want to show you how to remove that pencil's lines and make it softly for my painting. We just need a soft eraser, something like that. And that's what I'm doing. I just uh, remove the extra pencil. So it's going to be look like a, almost like a ghost, but in that case, I have a chance to, to paint without the strong shapes there. So that's the trick number one. So now it's much uh, softly. I see something still, and that's exactly what I need. And after that, uh, I'll take my paper put it back like this. By the way, this is the Sanders water for 300 grams rough paper. And I put the water on the back only. And that's why I'm asking you to wait. And after that, we can talk, you can ask me something because uh, my paper need the time. The water have to go inside the paper, inside the fibers deeply. Uh, that means the top side will be dry and I can use the dry brush strikes, but because of the, a lot of water inside in the middle and on the paper and on the back, I have a time and my watercolors not drying fast. That's the trick. So, uh, and another one mistake what people doing always, then they start to prepare the paper like that. It's not wet, it's not ready. Uh, we have to, you know, patience is important. We have to wait at least 10 minutes and the water have to go on inside softly and right after that we can start to paint. So remember 10 minutes, at least we have to wait. So paper is prepared and now we can talk. Okay. I'm gonna share um, the PowerPoint slide, Michael, and you can... Okay. Um, help us to take us through your social media accounts and some of the artworks that we've prepared for our guests today. Okay. okay. Thank you. Here we go. So would you like to share a bit more about your Instagram account? Uh, 
Yeah, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm lucky. That, uh, you see, that this is my wife. She's here to support me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she helped me a lot to care about the Instagram and Facebook. So we're working together because, you know, there is no time for teaching, painting, and care about the social media at the same moment. So uh, that means the half of the posts and the half of the answers she's doing for me and we work together. Uh, so that means all about the Instagram, she care about that more than me, but the Facebook is more me than her. So we're working like a company. Mm. And uh, unfortunately, the few weeks ago uh, it was hacked, but now I put it back. It's my account again. Mm. So welcome. And we do our best to post the, the new paintings and uh, new uh, new artworks and the videos and the uh, tricks every day. Yeah, that's another one project on the YouTube. Uh, last three years, every Monday, we run the video, it's called the 15 minutes uh, watercolor with Michael Solovyev every Monday. So we're recording that, editing, and always it's a different subjects and uh, it's for free. So it's like a, a, another one school and I have a lot of followers and students and we have a lot of questions after each video. And I do my best to communicate with the people because for me, it's the best way to share my experience with the, uh, with the people and followers on the YouTube. So if you don't know about that channel, uh, just take 15 minutes with Michael and you'll find it on the YouTube and welcome to join me. Uh, I, re I really appreciate your YouTube videos. I have you. watched you do several plein air things and uh, I, I, I've appreciated you very much. So thank you for sharing your knowledge. Thank you, and you know, it's very important for me, your support, thank you for that. Uh, that that's, that's really, really something. And this is the website, watercolonline.com. We uh, run it, if I'm right, two years ago, then the COVID starts, uh, and I, I lost the contact with my students and the, all the workshops was canceled. So we run that project. And here you can find a lot of videos for free, a lot of courses about the different subjects, and a lot of information of all my materials. So we're trying to build like a, 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 I couldn't say that like a, okay, point of the watercolor, the materials, the experience, the tricks, everything in one place. And I always care about that website. So any questions, I will be happy to answer. Yeah, that's the last painting. You know, uh, that uh, I saw that in, in um, Bordeaux this summer, uh, the lady uh, say, my husband asked a gin tonic, what is that? <laughs> and I like that point, so that's why I make this painting. <laughs> a lady was really noisy, <laughs> but I understand the point, yeah. Michael? Yes. Uh, are you a, strictly a watercolorist or do you venture into other creative art environments? Uh, it uh, depends, you know, uh, when I'm starting to paint, I turn off my mind completely. So I'm following more instinctive stuff. If I'm focusing on the same subject, I'm thinking about the, all the space around like a background to show my main subject better. Uh, if that helps, I can create the street buildings or uh, a lot of people on the background. If not, I just trying to make the good background to support the main subject. It's always the different solutions. All right, thank you. My pleasure. Yeah, that uh, I don't remember. I have to ask my wife, this painting took uh, the, the one of the prize on the some exhibition. That's the man in Rome. And that was a very sad picture because you know the, the marble uh, line like that, it's like a huge part of the history and the poor man sitting there with a 
cup of coffee. And that's the contrast. It was a huge surprise for me because that was my first uh, visit in Rome. And the history, what I'm uh, learning that I was a kid, the history of the uh, European civilization, it was incredible. And that blew my, that contrast just blew my mind. So that's why that painting coming from this. And by the way, he is look like a real Rome man, Romanian. Here is it. Yeah, uh, you see, it's a pretty big painting. So it's one meter by one meter. It's a huge one. And that's my wife. Yes. Yeah, I should. Yeah, the lady who support me very much. Yeah, uh, that painting called I'm Tired. Uh, that's uh, this man living near my place. And I saw him on the street and he's standing like that. You know, it's uh, for a lot of people, it's very hard to breathe and we have a mask like that. And that's why we put in it like, like uh, keep the nose open. And he looked like a very tired man. And it was uh, like a touching subject. And that's why I made that painting. Uh, that painting took the second prize just a one month ago on Chile International Exhibition. Um, uh, the painting called uh, Waiting, and that's the lady, uh, honestly, uh, it's not exactly visible in the painting. Uh, she's standing in the train and just put the, uh, the arm like that on the window and just looking on the, on the people around on the stop train. And that painting uh, was sold on the exhibition and took the second prize, which is big honor for me. Yeah. That's called Good Morning. <laughs> because for, for my feeling, it's exactly look like a good morning. Um, you know, uh, I'm, because I'm living in Canada and we still have a lot of snow here behind my studio. And that painting called The Spring is Coming. And uh, he's uh, the Mexican lady. And uh, by the way, here's the uh, tallow blue uh, uh, turquoise color from the Daniel Smith for sure. And uh, for me, it was like a challenge uh, to mix the bright, uh, sweet blue color uh, for the uh, old lady like that uh, and use that for the skin and still keep the light because it's like a unusual uh, mixing. Normally, if we want to uh, explain the uh, old age, we're using more soft grayish color, not that blue bright. So that's why it's called Spring is Coming. So it was a challenge for me and I like that painting very much. It was on the few exhibition in the United States. That's uh, the same size, uh, 40 by 40 inches, meter by meter. That's my son. Uh, that's why he a little bit look like me, uh, just younger. He's uh, 15 years old. And uh, you know, in that age, people growing up just like that because two years ago, he was a kid. Now he's not a kid anymore. And that was a surprise for my eyes. That's why I did that. Just to remember another one step of my kid. Uh, that called Maya, and that uh, lady is real Maya. So I, I took that photo uh, in the national part of the city. So it's real, real Maya in, in that time. So, and it was a surprise for me as well, because I just read about that people like a history part and couldn't imagine what I can see that in real. It's a little bit different uh, uh, skin tone. It's a little bit different proportions. And it's uh, an absolutely black hair, very interesting people. Okay, that, that's the end of the um, slide, okay. Michael. So you're gonna stop Great. here. And my paper is ready, by the way. So we can start any time. Uh, okay, I'll put my paper uh, on my board and you know uh, all the process you can ask me any questions we can talk so feel free that's your time i switch the camera and i will show you what i'm doing now 
So you see that the back side is wet. You can see the reflection and that's the dry. So I put it on my board. I'm doing that for just one reason. Uh, in that case, I can use the dry brush strikes for that and keep my paper clear paper. So I remove the extra water and uh, to make my process comfortable, um, I will use the tape to fix the paper on the board. Michael? Yes. Uh, are you a person who um, works in a procedure like from back to front? Or in a specific area first. Uh, you, you mean then I'm starting to paint? When you, what, yeah, when you're painting. Okay, good question. So normally I'm following the uh, two main rules about the watercolor. I'm always painting from top to bottom because the water moving in that direction, and the water is our main tool. That's why I keep uh, the board with a very soft angle to use the gravity. And the second rule, I'm always painting from the lights to shadow because it's very easy to make any part darker and it's pretty hard to make your painting lighter. So that's why slowly from lights to shadow, we add the colors. Right. Michael, are you paint, painting, painting on an incline? Yes, exactly. So uh, that's that's ready for the process, and for this, you know, I, honestly, that's one of the best thing about the Daniel Smith paint, because uh, all my set, uh, you already know that is transparent, and that means it doesn't matter what colors I mix together. In the end, I'm always have a bright, transparent, and nice mix. That's why I almost never clean my palette. It's always look like that, you know, uh, and that's the most expensive things what you can find because that's unique colors, unique mix. You couldn't repeat it. Yeah, uh, it's always like a brilliant stuff that mag or dirt what you have on the palette. But uh, if I'm starting to use that today, you do not see my colors and how I'm mixing that. That's why I'm gonna use the tube, the tubes. And we need a five colors for that painting. All of them you can find in my set here. That's my main stuff. So that's Indigo, Quinacridone Deep Gold, Quinacridone Sienna, uh, Purine Violet, amazing color. You know, I couldn't survive without that. It's my main tool. And the uh, uh, alizarin crimson. Uh, I can say the few words about the uh, the color mix for the skin tone, because that's the question what I have always. So how to mix the colors for the skin tone? Honestly, uh, there is no colors for the skin tone. It depends on the kind of skin, depends on the light, depends on the a lot of things. So there is no like a one solution. You know, you can uh, take any dirt here make it just a little bit more warm and you will have a skin tone. So uh, there is no like a special solution for that, but few tricks we still have. Like normally if we want to make like a skin tone, what I'm using, I'm using the Purine Violet from one side and the Queen Sienna from the second side. So if we mix that together, that will be great solution for the skin tone, normally. But the kids, what I have today, like a subject, it's a different question. So look at that. It's a very soft colors, incredible bright and clear. So I couldn't use that mix for that. That's why I use the crimson instead of the pure and violet. Here is it. And the Queen of Crayon Deep Gold, instead of the Queen Sienna. So that really sweet and soft color. That will be my main mix for the skin tone here. Plus, for sure, we care about the shadows. And for the shadows, 
I'm starting to use a lot of pure environment. So uh, unfortunately, I couldn't keep my subject here. I, I will try times to times, but anyway, I will move the, the iPad because I need access to my area. So ready? Ready. Good. So as I say, uh, some part I want to keep like a, a, almost like a clear white paper. I need that bright light. I like how it's look like. So we keep this. I keep the highlights on the nose somewhere here. So that's why uh, I don't want to put the water on the front, but because a lot of water on the back, I have a time to mix my colors perfectly. And because you're asking uh, which step is the first. So here, the most lighter part on the painting, the face. So we're starting from the face. Michael? Yes? Can you explain the brush? The brush? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, all the materials what I'm using here, including my tape and the board and all the brushes, you can find on my website, watercolorline.com. That's the special brush. It's uh, handmade by Chinese master made for me. Uh, uh, you know, I have no idea how, how I paint without that brushes now. It's very specific brush. By the way, on the YouTube channel, you can find the, uh, the big course about the brushes for free. And I explain all the rules uh, and the things about the regular brushes and a special course about mine brushes. So you can find all the answers right there. It's the goat, but it's kind of specific brush, not the regular one. So you see, it's a really, really sweet mix. And at the same moment, I have a chance to keep the big part of the paper just like a clear paper. Michael, could you remind us which two colors are you using? Uh, that's the mix between quinacridone deep gold and alizarin crimson. Okay, thank you. Michael, how long does it normally take you to finish a painting? Um, I will try to be fast. I don't want to take all your time. So I believe we fit in the 40 minutes. I'll do my best. No, no, no. Normally, how long does it take uh, you? Normally, uh, normally no more than two hours. You know, uh, honestly, I couldn't paint longer because uh, my, uh, my feeling going to change, the mood, everything, and I feel something different. And if I back to my painting in a few hours, I want to start from zero again, because I, 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 like, I like a different person. So that's why I'll try to do that really fast. Michael. Yes. Is that, is that due to your conditioning from uh, going out and doing uh, outdoor painting and, and the environment changes so rapidly? Uh, the, you mean then I'm painting outside? Yeah, it, it seems oh. to make you change your way you do things when you go outdoor painting. Okay, that's the good question. So honestly, uh, uh, before I start to paint, uh, I look around and I'm trying to, uh, not just me, I believe a lot of artists doing the same thing. We're trying to build the picture in our mind. We're trying to imagine what we want to have on the paper. And after that, uh, then we start, uh, you know, the condition going to be changed, the sunlight going to be changed, the people moving, the cars moving, but uh, you have in your mind, the picture, what you want to have, what you want to say. And we mostly fall in that uh, compared to the reality. Reality is just like a reference point, not the goal. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, Michael, uh, yeah. this violet you're using, is this the perlin violet? Exactly. So I'm, for the shadows, I'm starting to use the perlin violet and just a little bit indigo. 
and you see uh, all that touching what I did. Uh, it's not dry. So I have a time to mix my colors, continue to play with my mixing, add something, remove something. Uh, that's the reason why I put the water on the back. And yeah, for, for instance, this one is just a clear mix between indigo and the pure and violet. Plus, I use the sienna now because that bright, sweet mix I use just for the light. Inside the shadow, I put more darker pigments. And because of the wet paper, I can use wash out. I can collect the pigments and remove them like this. Michael, I have a question. Sure. Uh, well, first of all, happy birthday. Uh, <laughs> second of all, uh, would you call yourself a tonalist or an impressionist? Uh, it's too complicated question, you know. Uh, I believe it's more easy to other people to find the right answer uh, on that. I call myself an artist. <laughs> I believe that that's the best answer. Uh, it's it's very hard to, to say. Uh, have no idea, honestly, really. Uh, maybe more about the, the impressionist, but uh, not sure. So I appreciate maybe, your humility. <laughs> thank you. No, sorry, I, I, I really couldn't uh, uh, get the better answer. Have no idea. So when I'm painting, uh, you know, it's impossible to think about this and analyze what I did after. Uh, it's complicated as well. So just an artist. Michael, there. Um, um... This lady, Valerie, has a doubt whether you use the permanent version of alizarin crimson or just the normal alizarin crimson. Uh, that's the normal uh, alizarin crimson, not permanent. And just why, uh, why do you prefer this? Why do you prefer the regular uh, alizarin crimson? Um, because it's uh, very easy to wash out. Uh, the uh, permanent uh, more strongly and more strongly connected to the fibers. And uh, this one, uh, I can take off easily, look at that. So I take the brush and bring the light here. So that's mm -hmm. easy to do. Just wash out the pigments. With the permanent colors, it's a more complicated. They too stable for that trick. And I, I'm trying to use wash out a lot. So you see, I can just bring the lights in one touch. So for me, that's more important to, to have a chance to do that. That's why. Well, thank you for clarifying that. Michael. Yes. Hi, it's me, Vesnik. Happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I just want to say something about all your artworks. I see that you are an amazing uh, drawer. You understand the rules of anatomy, but uh, below all of this, uh, compliments for always making your paintings, even if you don't, if you, even if you wouldn't put any subject, all your paintings look so nicely composed, just like even if you remove the subject, it looks like a nice, um, amazing abstract work. So compliments for all your paintings. Thank you very much for your kind words. It's, it's important for me. Thank you. And it's always amazing to see you demonstrating. Thank you very much. So I Michael, yeah, yes, no, no problem. Uh, yes, go ahead. Um, on a slightly different subject, away from the painting, um, is uh, when you're doing the structural drawing to get the accuracy of the person that you're painting. Uh, do you use any specific? methods like the Loomis method or something like that to get the drawing right? Uh, okay, that, that's the good question. By the way, uh, thank you for, for this. You know, honestly, I hate to make the sketches when I'm painting. 
So I'm doing mm -hmm. that times to times for the demo for the portraits because in that case, people more uh, easy to follow in what I'm doing. But uh, in reality, then I make the sketch by pencil. It's look like uh, I tied, I couldn't move anymore. You know, uh, for instance, I have that shape. I'm already have it and I couldn't ignore it. Uh, I have to fall in that now. If it will be just a clear paper, uh, then I'm starting to reorganize my sketch. I can make it longer, higher, lower. I can change everything. Now I couldn't, I have to fall in the, what I have. So uh, honestly, I don't like to make the sketches by pencil, but then I'm doing that. I'm thinking about the sketch, just like I'm trying to create the, the map, not the perfect sketch, just a map to know where is my big shapes will be, mm -hmm. nothing more. So something very, very simple. So you're more of a direct painter. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Michael, what colors are you using for painting her hat? Uh, this is the complicated mix. That's why it's look like a, a very rich colors. And I like that oranges. So this is a, a queen uh, deep gold, queen sienna and uh, crimson together. That's why it's look that bright. And going to the shadows, I'm starting to add a little bit pure violet inside with a more queen sienna. And you see, I have a very rich brownish colors there. So it's a good combination. And for the hair, the lady have a very complicated colors here. Look at that. So it's really, really hard to mix something like this. But uh, because I have a pure violet and I have indigo, that's possible to do. Michael, what brush would you suggest for somebody if they don't have that really interesting brush that you're using? What would you suggest as an alternative? Uh, there is no alternative. <laughs> yeah, I know how it sounds, but yeah, yeah. Uh, something specific. Um, you know, you can find a lot of alternative to the uh, this, the calligraphy brush, but that, uh, the secret of that, uh, it's the gold brush. But that goat, it's not the regular goat, it's prepare it. So uh, the master uh, makes some preparation for the, uh, for the hair. And that's why you see it's very strong, like a spring. Uh, uh, normally the gold brush is uh, so soft and you couldn't do, for instance, that, like wash out, look at that. So I can do that with this brush easily. Normally with the other brushes, it's impossible. So that's why Unfortunately, there is no alternative for this. And the best thing what people can do if uh, someone wants to fall in the same solution, just uh, go to the, my website or Amazon. Uh, we have that brushes there and you can find it. Thank you. Michael, this is your friend, Sylvia. Happy birthday. Thank you very much, Silvia. How are you? <laughs> Fine. I, I just, all your paintings, I really love them. And, and the way you teach, because you always give all your secrets. And you're right. I have tried that brush and, and it's just the best for that. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Happy birthday, Michael. This is Stella. I have to congratulate you too. Thank you, Stella. <laughs> I saw your uh, your video the, uh, a few weeks ago. You are amazing. <laughs> Not as amazing as you are. I love Come you. On. <laughs> and I really um, like that you give such credit to your wife because the work and the internet and Instagram, all those videos, I know she does such an amazing job for you. So give her a big hug from all of us. Thank you, absolutely. Thank you.
So you see, I use the washout a lot and that's important trick for that. I'm still not touching here the second time, but I will. I just have to wait, it should be dry a little bit. But in that time I can work on the hair. And you see the, the brown color, what I'm mixing, uh, as you know, on my palette, the brown colors not exist. But look, I can do that uh, easily uh, because I mix two colors together. That's the indigo. And that's the Queen Sienna. So normally all the brown colors like uh, burnt amber or something, all of them not transparent. That two guys give you the nice brown color, but it will be very transparent. You see? So you can make it a little bit colder, a little bit more warm. And that's what I will mix here as well. So I'm always mix my brown color. You see, it's really look like a brown and it just mix it. Another one trick, uh, because I have to mix it always and all the time, it's always look different. And that's why it's always look interesting. That's another one solution. If I want to add some more sunny lights here, I just switch to the deep gold like this, and it's going to be more sunny. So that's uh, uh, almost dry. The pigment's still not stable, but that's stable enough to put the second layer a little bit, a little bit softly. So that's what we're gonna do here. And I softly blend it with the water again. Can we see the original image, please? Uh, yep, sure. Um, I will try to put it here for the moment. After that, I have to move it again. But for now, yes. Michael, how important is the reference photo to you uh, during the painting process? Absolutely not important. Uh, before someone ordered me to create exactly that uh, lady, in that case, it will be important. If no one ordered me that, I can do everything I want. So it's just, uh, just a reference, not important. Just like a point for inspiration. Nobody asked me to copy that, right? So I feel something about uh, this picture. What I'm trying to explain is just my feeling, but not the subject. Thank you so much. My pleasure. You see all the all the painting we made with just one bad brush. After that, I switched to the calligraphy brush to to make the lips, the nose more detailed. But that's a really great tool because all what I need. I can do just, you know, I'm a lazy guy to switch from one brush to another one all the time. It's too complicated. If you have a one great tool, <laughs> that's always enough.
Uh, sorry, I have to move it because I need the access to, to other parts. This time I switched to a little bit bigger brush because I need a bigger strikes there. That's by the way, the question about the reference, you see here we have a green background, but I don't need the green to explain my subject. So I switch to the something which I think will be better for my painting. Is your paper still damp? Yes. So uh, it you, you can if you can touch that, you'll feel it's still really wet on the back. Honestly, if we're talking about the Saunders with the Ford or Archer's paper, I have around uh, one hour till we'll be dry on the back, and I have to stop my process. So I have a time to play. Thank you. And this part still wet. You see, I can touch it, and you can. See how the pigments move. So everything is still wet. Thank you. And you see that wash out things just bring a lot of lights and the sunlight in our painting. So I like that strikes and I'm trying to use that. That's possible only because all the pigments really transparent and it never will be look like, even if I mix all of them together, that never will be look like a dirt. It's always will be look like a brilliant combination. Hi, Michael. Oh, uh, I'm George from Greece. What a <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. What a beautiful painting. Thank you. And, you know, thanks for being one of the jurors in our exhibition in, in Thessaloniki in Greece this time. It, it means a lot. Thank you for the invitation, George. It's, it's an honor for me. Absolutely, great master of our days. Thank you. For, for now, uh, sorry for the noise, I will turn off uh, my sound because I have uh, to make it dry a little bit. So I'll back in just one minute.
you know, to uh, b the best way to explain the bright light here and make the face look like a sunny, shiny or something. Uh, the best way to add a strong contrast, something really dark. And I like the uh, black stuff here. It's look perfect because of that. That's look really, really shiny. And as you know, I don't have a black, but I have an indigo. And if I add just a little bit quince yet, a little bit pure violet, I have a perfect dark black. You can see that. So now I can add that contrast and that helped me to make the more lights on the subject. Michael, how often do you change your water or do you change it at all? Uh, I'm a lazy guy, never, <laughs> never, ever. No, I, honestly, honestly, uh, even if it's look like a dirt like that, it's still clean enough for painting. That's not a big problem. Except if I want to do something really transparent like a, like this mix, yeah, it's too dirt for that. But that's why I make it in the beginning. After that, there is no like a transparent mixes like that. and. It's not a problem anymore. John, and you have to know that at least 50% of our pigments are in the water. <laughs> <laughs> yes, true. See, because of the combination between very soft gradients, what we did here and the dry brush like that, that's contrast help us to explain the good light there. So now I switch to the calligraphy brush, this one. By the way, it's, it's not the regular brush as well because this brush, it's a combination between two here. It's a kind of wolf inside and the goat outside. It's brilliant brush. You have a very sophisticated palette. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Remember, we uh, removed the pencil in the beginning. So for now, my pencil almost gone. I see something just here, but on the eyes, it's not exist. So uh, that's why I'm painting almost from the zero. But because of that, we don't see the pencil in the end and that's good. So slowly our lady coming from the paper. It's magical. Thank you.
you know, I believe my teacher was right. It's better to uh, take the next time the man with the beard and the sunglasses. <laughs> Michael, we are enjoying your demo so much. Everyone is commenting. <laughs> Congratulations. And happy Thank birthday. You. I don't know if I said that, but happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Michael. Yes. Uh, I get to this stage in uh, when I do face portraits. I've got all the tonal skin values and everything all nice and done. And I get to the eyes and they end up looking like cartoon eyes. Uh, and it really frustrates me because you put so much effort into doing a painting uh, and you get to the eyes and I, I somehow just don't get how to do eyes properly. Have you got any tips? Um. Could, could you repeat it again? Uh, uh, sorry. I, uh, He's asking I, for tips for doing the eyes. Ah, okay. Um, the tips for doing the eyes. Okay, uh, first of all, don't, uh, uh, good question. Yes, I have a few. Uh, first of all, don't finish it your shapes uh, perfectly. I mean, don't make the shape of all the eyes finish it. Mm. Uh, because if you will do that, you have to be perfect or you can make something unfinished and the people who look at your painting uh, have to in imagination finish that job and then they make it look perfect so don't do all the job yourself and unfinished shapes of the eyes always look much better that's the first one uh, the second one keep the um, gradients so don't make like a one big color everywhere Mm -hmm. Gradients, you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, it's uh, always uh, the uh, the mix going to be changed, uh, and it's a very soft gradient from the light to the shadow, from the colder to the warm. It's change it. So it's not just one big color everywhere, and for sure, transparency. Mm. This is hypnotizing. Mesmerizing. Thank you. Hypnotizing. Okay, the most interesting mix for the lips so i have to back my my first mix uh, queen Acridon deep gold and crimson together and i know for now it will be a surprise for you for now it's look like a very bright uh it's look like a makeup but then it's dry it will be much softer and that's exactly what i'm looking for so it will be look like a makeup only in the beginning But that's the same mix what we use for skin and the light. Michael, do you tend to paint vertical or horizontal format? Uh, okay, you mean the, the, the paper? Okay. Uh, depends, you know, for the video, it's always better to make the, the landscape because it's like in portrait position. Uh, you see just a small size painting 
and a lot of empty table. So that, that's why for the video, I prefer the, the landscape. Uh, other, uh, other way, it depends on the subject uh, for sure, of course. Sometimes better to make it on vertical, sometimes the landscape. So that's the pure and violet, make it a little bit darker. Michael, is this your normal pace of painting? Sorry? Is this your normal pace of painting? Your each stroke is um, very precise and it's a joy to watch. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Uh, you know, it depends on the subject. Sometimes, uh, you know, I really want to pick up all the details and make something precise painted. Sometimes, I want to go almost to the abstract. This always depends on the, of the subject. There is no like a one solution for any case. And yeah, that's another one trick. So uh, instead of the create the white lines here, I will make the negative space to make the, the hair like this. And just blend it with the water. Michael, yes. With regards to style and what you do, uh, who are the artists that have influenced you over, you, over the years? Um, could you repeat it again? Sorry. Uh, which artists have influenced you over the years? Um, are, are there any of the classic art, uh, watercolor artists, uh, like Kerner, for example? Oh, uh, okay, um, okay, got it. Uh, okay, what my, my favorite artist is uh, Andrew White, always uh, was. Uh, 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 not just in the watercolor, in the oil, doesn't matter. It's just uh, for me, it's like a like a god almost in that job. Uh, talking about the watercolor, I really like the Louis. Uh, it's something amazing level. Thinking about the light, shadow, watercolor, uh, I couldn't think like him. So for me, it's like another one, God in watercolor. So that two guys is is important point for me when I'm thinking about the the art. I'm always thinking about them. Michael, do you mix your blacks or do you use black straight from the tube? Uh, first of all, I don't have a black in my set. Uh, I never use a black. I have a neutral tint, but uh, I'm using the neutral tint only if I need the, uh, like a fast, create the dark, dark points, like for the wires or something. Normally I'm always mix that like, like this one. And it's always, uh, inside Indigo, that's my main point for the creation, the black. So that, that's important. Um, and depends, you know, the black colors, it's not exist, honestly. N not because someone say that, like in our school, always teachers say, don't use the black. But we have a cool black, warm black, light black, but not the, like a real black. So that's why for me, it's more easy to mix the black colors, like when you say black, but not uh, use it directly from the tube. I don't know which one uh, take in that case.
before we got on here today, I asked you what your favorite subject was, and you answered with the world is your favorite subject, painting everything in the world. Is there somewhere that you have not been that you would like to go and uh, paint? Um, you know, uh, I, I like to travel for sure. Uh, if I if I can, and before the COVID, uh, I'm traveling a lot. So if I can, I want to see uh, all the world uh, and be everywhere. So that, that's important for me. But then I say uh, the world itself, I mean, uh, uh, I couldn't say what I prefer to make the portraits. For sure, the people is the, the most interesting uh, subject anywhere uh, on the planet. Nothing interesting like, like a human around us. But more important, uh, I mean, everything, the cityscapes, yes. Landscapes, sure, the, the sea escapes and forest, mountains, the, the human bodies, everything. Uh, if it's just uh, inspiring me, that's great. Uh, from, you know, it's, it's very hard for me to say, okay, from this moment, I'm gonna paint just the forest. I'm gonna die in that gate. <laughs> You know, uh, I, 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 sometimes I'm enjoying to see the people. Sometimes I enjoy the mountains. And I, I think it's the a real artist's job. If you see something what you or you like, uh, you enjoy that. Um, you always want to share that. It's not interesting to see the good movie alone. You want to ask all your friends to be with you and share that. That's the what art is doing on, on, on my feeling. So I want to say, look, 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 it's look great. Look at this, look at that. And I couldn't say uh, it's just about the mountains. It's about uh, a lot of different things. If, if I like something, I'm trying to show that. So for me, it's like a real artist job. The, the science people use the microscopes to, uh, to uh, explore the world and explain it after that. We are using the Daniel Smith and water, but that's the same job. Uh, that's why uh, I couldn't say that's the subject only. The light, yeah, that's, I can say, I like the light. You know, turn off light, you see zero. So the light is our main tool anyway. Beautiful, Michael. Thank you so much. Thank you for the question. So for now, I just trying to uh, fix my mistakes, some part not uh, bright enough, not dark enough or something. So that's why I add the last touching and it will be almost done. So just in a few minutes, we finish with that. You're amazing, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Sajnik wants to ask you if, uh, like for someone who starts, is it important to do portraits from life or is it okay to start from, from pictures, from photos? Uh, it doesn't matter, uh, you know, uh, absolutely doesn't matter. Some people uh, think what painting from the photo more easily because the subject doesn't move and uh, you can just perfectly pick up it. Uh, some people like me uh, think what the photo is uh, terrible stuff because it's stuck and I couldn't change it. In the real life, uh, the people moving and that's great because I can rebuild everything what I want, I can pick up what I want, not following the photo precise. But honestly, it doesn't matter. It's not uh, the goal, the, uh, the copy the subject. It's the goal anyway to explain your feeling about the subject. If you prefer to use for that uh, photo, that's great. If you're inspiring by real subject, that's great as well. So no rules, you decide. Thank you so much. So Michael, when you're done, will you post that for us so we can see the finished result? Yes, sure, absolutely. Uh, I just need a two more minutes and that will be done. And yeah, absolutely. We oh. can post it. Michael? Yes. Throughout the painting, are you constantly keeping in your mind um, about minimal brush strokes? 
<laughs> yes, uh, you know, uh, finally, with all my experience, I understood what idea of the be lazy artist, it's a good idea. Less touching as possible, keep your artwork transparent. If we're talking about the watercolor. Uh, less colors uh, for mixing. Uh, if you use uh, less colors for one painting, for sure, for the another one uh, artwork, it will be completely different set. Uh, that's why I need a, a lot of uh, Daniel Smith paint in my studio. But for each painting, I use like a limited numbers of colors and that make uh, the job more uh, simple. So uh, for me, it's a good point, simplify the process. Uh, less strikes to keep it transparent. Uh, um, I'm always trying to say, uh, no, that's not right. Do less as possible. If uh, the idea is understandable, I have to stop. Because in that case, I can uh, continue to paint like for hours, but it doesn't make sense always. So if you uh, think or feel what your idea is understandable, if you say what you want to say, just stop. Which leads on to the ultimate question. When do you know when you're finished? <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> um, he answered that already. <laughs> uh, I can tell you the funny the story about that. I have one friend, I don't want to tell you the name, uh, artist, and um, he always make the very nice still lives. Uh, he painted by oil, and very nice still lives, uh, very detailed, but always a little bit unfinished. Uh, that's why it's look very interesting. Uh, and the still lives is really complicated, but because it's unfinished, uh, he, he's a very realistic guy, but still a little bit unfinished. It's look very interesting. And I'm always asked, no, at once I ask him, how do you understand at what point you, you have to stop? He say, that's simple, I'm painting. And times to times, my wife pass uh, behind me and say, stop please. And I know what I have to stop. And <laughs> one time on the internet, I saw the uh, painting from him and that was completely detailed. So he made something like a photocopy. And uh, I asked him, what happens? He say, my wife's going to the vacation. So <laughs> nobody stopped me. So th that's the point. Honestly, uh, uh, hard to explain. Uh, it's, it's not easy to say you have to stop on that point or this point. Um, again, if you think what everything is understandable and you feel good, you have to stop. If some part still look like a problem for you, uh, you can continue to fix that. So I believe this one is done. We have a shiny lady. We just missed the last point, and for that, I switched to another one brush. Yeah. Michael, uh, how important is art to the world? Uh, it's a great question. Uh, I don't know why we need the world without art. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I believe it's the, the main thing uh, what people can create, our civilization can create because all the stuff what we have the like uh, iPhone, iPad, the cars, uh, all what we have is just like the tools what help us to save a lot of time to make the art. It's just make our life more comfortable, more easy. And that's why we have a time to focus in, on the art because uh, in the end, for my feeling for sure, in the end, after all the countries, civilization, uh, we have uh, books, paintings, sculptures, the art, and that's explain the, the civilization, the time, the humans, and this is what we have. Not the, uh, not this, it's just a tool, okay? So, Michael, thank you for sharing your birthday and doing a phenomenal demo. 
Uh, many people wish you a very, very happy birthday. Um, Thank you. Uh, there's a lot of questions about your brushes. Please go to Michael's site. As he was saying, he goes over his brushes. He also has a YouTuber. He explains his brushes. And with that, Michael, thank you so very, very much. And thank you all for watching today and taking part. It was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you again, Michael. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.